Hello, and welcome to an Apple Brandy review. Um, the lighting is really terrible in here now. Uh, so <laughs> it used to be, I, I looked like a smurf because it was I was lit up blue on one side. And now I see the, the camera has adjusted to make everything overexposed. So we've gone uh, to completely the opposite direction. All right, um, so um, Laird's. Laird split between their headquarters in Scobieville, New Jersey, but they can no longer distill there because it's been kind of all the apple orchards have been wiped out by Trump golf courses and things. And their actual new current distillery in North Garden, Virginia. Um, Laird's is the, if as I recall, the oldest licensed distiller in the U.S. Uh, they are a national treasure, and I wish they would get more attention than they do. They make a bunch of current uh, of sort of. Normal line of bottlings. I reviewed a bunch of them. I will link them up down below. Uh, do not buy the Applejack. Do not buy the Applejack. Just go straight to the Apple Brandy. Um, but my favorite by far has been the series of single cast release. It was the, the biggest surprise for me um, in the first year of um, my my doing this channel was the was a Laird single cast, which absolutely stole my heart. But now I got three of the damn things to try out. Uh, two of them I have actually bought because I love I love this line that much, and uh, we're just gonna compare them. And normally I would I wouldn't do these sort of you know uh, <laughs> comparisons of individual barrels, but in this case they're different enough, and bring out the the complexities of apple distillate enough that I thought thought it would be a fun uh, exercise. So what have I got here? I have got, oh, that first one needs a little topping off, two picks that Binnie's did. Uh, uh, full disclosure, uh, I work for Binnie's in the wine department. I don't think they care much what I say about spirits, especially not um, apple brandy picks that they have long since sold through. But, uh, you know, there it is. Um, so what I got here is their most recent pick. Um, this, let me just hold this up for you. This is a 57 month old, so almost five years. Um, distilled, uh, well, distilled presumably in what? Uh, 2015, but bottled in uh, January 2020. This is an older bottling. This was the sister cast to the one that I went crazy about. Uh, this one was distilled in 2014 sometime. I'll put all this information down below. And then bottled in. Um, November 2018, so it's been out there for a little while. Fif uh, 54 months old, this one, so really uh, four and a half. And then there's this one, which I'm really curious about. There's no information on the little my little sample bottle here, but this is a seven-year-old, so it is um, distilled in, in 2013, and then bottled uh, in October uh, 2020. Um, uh, 84 months old, this was a pick by uh, Comrade Brandy, um, who I'm not really super familiar with, but good, you know, they managed to get a hold of a seven-year-old Laird's, and that makes me excited enough. So, enough uh, of my chattering. Let's get into these. So I'm going to go up by uh, by proofage, basically, by strength. So the oldest ha also happens to be the strongest. So this first one, this 57-month-old, Barrel number 15E07, uh, number mark 10 for Binnie's, is a mere 60.5% alcohol. Oh, I love, I love the way these things smell. I just, oh, it's delightful. Okay, so what you're getting is a lot of apple pie. Um, uh, apple pie, cinnamon really like a cinnamon ice cream. So apple pie with cinnamon ice cream on the side. Very, very confected. Um, tons of clove, uh, black pepper too. Vanilla, although it's not uh, super pronounced. Sweet tea. And then you get a little bit more um, kind of sour and, and, and bitter elements coming through. Like, uh, it's apple, but it's more like cider apple. 
and a little touch of, of floral elements, like a, like a potpourri kind of thing, which can show up in apple distillate quite often, like you, you um, nose young calvados, or uh, just really un like other layers, for example, you will get um, uh, like just lots and lots of floral stuff. It's something that apple, apple spirit does. And it's delightful, but we're really on the sort of apple pie, cinnamony, ice cream sort of thing. That's really what this is all about, and I'm totally into that. Um, on the palate, oh god, I love these things. I don't think it's quite as good as the cask I reviewed, um, well, like two years ago, but. This is very good, especially for the prices. These are usually roll around 50 bucks. I mean, you know, it's, whew. these are, these are values for, for what you're getting. These are huge values. Um, so the palette is, I mean, it's big, it's intense. It's very American. Um, we don't think of, of apple brandy as a particular, like this just, it's, it's, it's huge and oaky and, uh, but you're also getting those apple elements in there. Like I could see rye nerds getting into this really hardcore because it's got that that combination of a really assertive distillate and just the huge oak hit. Um, and the finish is actually impressively long. Considering the age, and especially considering their price. Oh, that's good. Um, I should probably give you some notes. So stewed apple, um, vanilla bean, creme brulee. Um, there's a little like an ashy campfire ash kind of component here. Um, some nutshells. Um, again, this is very American, kind of like burned nutshells. A little cinnamon going on. And, you know, kind of floating about all that is the kind of floral potpourri thing. Um, Two, uh, some again sweet tea. Especially on the the arrival, there's some sweet tea. And yeah, some kind of autumn leaves. Kind of inter autumn leaves intermingling with the burned nutshell stuff. I mean, if you are a fan of sort of American style spirits, the very very oak forward. You gotta try one of these. Um, they're just they're just terrific. Uh, you know, if I'm if I'm in a store, and it's and I'm I'm staring at, at rare breed on the one hand, and this on the other hand, like that's a real decision, right? And that's saying a lot considering how much I considering the esteem I hold wild turkey rare breed in. Um, I've just realized that I did not bring my eyedropper, so I'm gonna have to eyeball this with my um, little water cup. I don't like doing this. But uh, we'll wing it just a hair bit more. Okay, hopefully I didn't drown it. Okay, on to glass number two. This is bottled at, um, this, one's, this one actually came with a, a little Binnie's pick label. So this is a, uh, Again, the twenty one, the one that was still in fourteen. You can tell from the number, the, from the number, which is fourteen E zero one number sign seven. Uh, one of my favorites. Fifty four months old. This is bottled at sixty three point five five percent alcohol. Layered single cask. Interesting. M m very different nose from the first one. And this is kind of why I'm doing this video, right? Because there's there's cask variation in these. Much more, um, much more austere than the previous one. So it's really kind of throwing spicy flowers at me. So it's, it's potpourri, but like spicy. We're getting some, some, you're mixing some clove and cinnamon and some black pepper in with your, 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 your flowers. Um, some Sichuan peppercorns also in there. And way in the back, You've got this sort of stewed apple thing. So it's almost as if, like, between these two glasses, the, the flowers and the apple have kind of switched uh, emphasis. Like, the flowers have kind of come forward, the apple has stepped back. 
a little a little kind of like fresh apple juice um maybe cider for that matter touch of vanilla but it's really like the spice and the then the, the flour is driving this it's very austere which i'm kind of into almond butter some some apple peel i mean it's very serious this is like this is like a laird's for i don't know you know sancerre lovers or something like that on the palette Maybe Chablis, more Chablis than Sancerre, because Sancerre's gotten, has gotten trendy, and I can't see this uh, getting super, this style getting super popular. All right, on the palette. Ooh. Oh, these are good. Again, much more austere than the first barrel. More spice and flour forward than apple forward. So we're getting black pepper and the kind of potpourri flowers thing that those are in the lead. Some there's is some lovely kind of oaky creme brulee kind of going on in the finish. Like so you you I don't know if you could make a creme brulee out of oak. Um, that's kind of what's going on. I guess that's mainly coming through in the finish though. The the front is very um, it's very serious. It's very dry. No, it's, 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 it's lightening up the more I drink of it. Some cinnamon apple, English breakfast tea, cardamom clove, that kind of nutshelly fall leafy thing going on again. Um, it's, this is absolutely a more difficult cask than the first one. And it's definitely more, more difficult than the, the, um, the other one I tasted uh, two years ago. It's sort of sister, Benny's pick. Um, this is a tricky one. This is, this is hardcore. I'm kind of into it, but I, have to, I also have to say I, like, I kind of like the first one better at this, at this point. And here we go again with my kind of pouring from the hip on the water. And as usual, I'm going to sort of go back through these um, after they've had water to kind of see how they, see how they develop. I hate pouring from the hip. I almost drowned this. I didn't quite, but I almost drowned this, which makes me unhappy. Okay, on to uh, layered single barrel number three, which is uh, the uselessly unlabeled sample bottle. Uh, but this is barrel number 13J24, number sign 30 for Cap Comrade Brandy. And it is, again, seven years old, 84 months, 65% alcohol dead. Here we go. <sighs> that is a lot of oak. You know what? You know what this smells like? Um, you know, Foursquare, the rum. <laughs> uh, this smells okay. It smells like apple Foursquare. If okay, if you if you aged Foursquare in an apple brandy cask, I think it would smell something like this. So you're really getting apple pie plus beige on rum, um, and I'm into it. So creme brulee, vanilla, pound cake, uh, pineapple. Um, some some tobacco coming through, like um, Virginia tobacco. Uh, you know, not not stove. This is still a little bit fresh and green, and a lot of English breakfast tea. And, uh, you know, as usual, the pepper and the flowers, but those are kind of way in the background. Um, to be honest, this kind of, kind of comes across like it may have been an oak a little bit too long. It's not as, it's not as, it's, that's adding something, but it doesn't smell as fresh as the others, especially not the first one. Um, some cinnamon sticks. I mean, this smells kind of like an oaky pot toddy, um, honestly. It's very dense. On the palate, I'm a little scared now. I am a little scared, but uh, we'll give it a go. <coughs> oh, 
Wow. Oak. Oh, God, that's a lot of oak. Tons of oak um, and wood tannins. By far the most intense and bracing woody finish of a lot of these. Black pepper, over stewed tea, cinnamon, just really brutal wood tannins. Um, yeah, over stewed sweet tea, definitely. Oh. That's a, that's a, I mean, if, if you had like really old uh, wood forward rise, this is, we're, we're kind of in that territory here with those where you, you kind of think to yourself, they might have pulled this out a year, a year too late. Um, campfire ash, just straight up ashtray, uh, just empty an ashtray into your mouth, but nice. Um, the leaves, the burned nutshells. And then you're, you're getting a little bit of that, that sort of candied, like caramel apple uh, covered in flowers, just thrown in there with the ashy tea tannin peppery stuff. Um, this is very serious. It's intense, it's brutal. It's not as austere as the second one, oddly. There's there's more, um, you know, kind of sweetie apple goodness to balance this off. But man, that, that finish is just, is just so, <laughs> There's some people that are going to love it. I mean, if you like dry, dry, if that's your thing, like, you're going to love this finish. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't remember how much this cost. I remember looking it up, but it wasn't expensive. I mean, especially relative to the... the, the to rise with a similar wood profile. This is an absolute bargain. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Hopefully not as much as the previous one. Let's see if that's enough. <laughs> oh, it actually needs a little more. I really like the eyedropper because it's repeatable. Like just shooting from the hip like this, you can never really control even with teaspoons and stuff, you can never quite get the, the, the dosage you want all the time. All right, let's go back through these. Now this third one has completely wrecked my palate. Um, all right, back to the 15E07 number 10 Vinny's pick, which, which was kind of my... I, I cannot d deny the quality of this, this Comrade Brandy pick, but man, it's, 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 <laughs> I feel like it's fighting me. Uh, so far, at least for the one I would want to, you know, keep, if I had to pick one of these to keep, I would go with the first one and we're going to try that one again, but n you know, never, never, you know, finish the, uh, call the fight done until it's done. So we're going to go through these with water. Okay. On the nose. Uh, so we're kind of getting a little bit closer to the second cask on the nose, more pepper, more cinnamon, more spiciness. Uh, the, the the floral elements are still pretty subdued on this, though. So maybe not not quite so much as I was initially saying with this with the convergence on the second one. It really smells like spicy apple sweet tea. And it's completely lovely and seductive. I, I love these things. I love them. Um all right, on the palette. I mean, there's no, no arguing with that, with that. Delicious, well-made, balanced. The, the balance on this is really, really nice. And it's extremely American. Like if you, again, if you, you know, like have the, have the, 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 uh, the flag hanging in front of your house and the truck nuts and the, the, uh, on your F-150 and all that, all that stuff, like real America. Um, you need to try these because these are, um, these are not, I know you're looking at what, looking at me and saying, but brandies are supposed to be sweet, right? These are not sweet. These are dry as fuck. Um, and you absolutely need to try them because they are huge values. Um, all right. Uh, let me, t let me just 
Drink this again. Oh. Just so good. Um, cinnamon pep cinnamony, peppery apple pie. Yeah. American oak apple heaven. Um, does have a lot of development on the palate, but I don't care. I don't care. This, you know, drink it neat, drink it with water. Doesn't matter. This is delicious. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to give this 87 out of a hundred. Not again, not quite as good, not quite as, you know, um, authoritative as that, uh, cask I had a few years ago, but man, I mean, for the price they're asking, buy these up, just grab them. 87 points. Very good. All right, let's move on to uh, the second, uh, uh, the 2014 cask here. 14E01, uh, number sign seven. The second uh, Benice pick from 18. Okay, so the apple does is coming out a hair bit more, but it feels like even the, the pepper and the potpourri stuff is also coming out more. Yeah, not a lot of development on the nose. It's it, it's kind of intensification of what was already there. And it's and what was there was austere. And, you know, it's this is apple brandy for Jansenists. And I kind of appreciate that. I kind of appreciate what this is rolling with. Um, wouldn't necessarily be my personal favorite, but... There's an integrity to this in in the hardcore nature of this um, that I absolutely appreciate. All right, on the palate. Huh. It actually becomes quite soft with water. And don't say I overwatered it because I can tell that I didn't. Um... It's still, how do I put this? Give me, give me a second. Let me try this again. So what's happened is you've still got all the same elements as before. The potpourri, the pepper, the wood tannins. But most, a lot of it happening on the finish. And it's still got that austerity to it. But... Something about adding water brings a kind of pillowy, soft element to this. It's very, the mouthfeel is actually very, very nice, um, which I was not getting before. Uh, yeah, this, is, this, this feels like pillowy, soft in my mouth. Um, <laughs> but it's, I mean, the flavor elements are still actually pretty brutal. Um, but this is good. This is I, I like this. I don't like this as much as the, as the previous one. I'm gonna give this 86 out of 100. But that that kind of that kind of pillowy softness, the mouthfeel improvement, kind of saved this for me at the last minute. Um, I appreciate that. And finally, on to the seven year old from Comrade Brandy. On the nose. Okay, now, on, like, this is so oaky. But in, like, sometimes I want that. You know, sometimes I want an oak bomb. I mean, it feels like, now that I've added water, that I'm, I'm, I just feel like I'm nosing a cooperage. You know, like, like there's sawdust and, and like, barrel shavings and, and, and stuff flying around. And somewhere in the cooperage, someone is eating an apple pie. And maybe sort of, um, you know, setting up some, some very nice flowers. Somewhere in the back there. It's just incredibly woody and dense on the nose, but it's nice. I mean, in the, in the war between the, the distillate and the, the, uh, the wood, which is kind of the appeal of these. It's kind of the appeal of American, you know, new oak driven spirits. The wood has won. The wood has absolutely won the battle at this point. But it's nice. This, the nose actually reminds me of, you know, again, of older rise, where, again, the wood is just kind of one. It's just kind of, 
you can tell that the rye is still kind of still alive a little bit, but it's it's just it's lost the battle. It is on its back and going down. All right, on the palate with this. <laughs> oh, wood tannins and black black pepper, man. Tannins and pepper, ahoy! Um, but I'm kind of into it. This is making this is the fact that it's making me laugh um, shows you how much I love these. Despite the fact that you could accuse this of being a hair bit out of balance, but I'm kind of into it right now. Mm -hmm. No, there is some like just beautiful caramel apple um, elements going on there too. Kind of interplaying with the pepper and the, the, the sort of tea tannin goodness. Um, this is, yeah, this is nice. I mean, the, the, the quality is absolutely there. Um, I'm also going to give this 87 points. But to be totally honest with you, this would be the one I would have between the two. This one just feels like a little bit too much put too much of a pain in the butt sometimes. But it is... <laughs> On occasion, I do want the, these oak monsters in my life. They're just good, man. Um, okay, that's all I got. Um, 87 points. 86 points. 87 points. Consistently good. Uh, especially around the, the, the $50 price point for American Spirits r right now. Um, these are killer values. And I invite you to scoop them up uh, where you see them. And if you are a retailer, I invite you to bring these things in. Push people towards them. Like, you know, people who are wandering around the bourbon section or whatever, looking for something a little bit different and a little bit more value-driven than, you know, freaking, you know, $100 four-year-old high rye bourbon or whatever the hell is out there. Those people start starting to look for alternatives. Turn them onto this. Throw this at them. Have a bottle you can pour a little for them. They'll be into it. Um, that's all I gotta say. Um, thanks for watching and cheers.